Hello there. Tonight's brush will be my Ever Ready 100. And it has a 20 millimeter golden nib finest in it. Now, you guys might be wondering why uh, I most of the time show the brush first. It's because I like the Badger brushes and some of the uh, uh, bore brushes, they once they absorb water, they look a little fuzzy or a little funny or they just don't look as appealing. And I want to show the brush. So I do the brush first and then I just set it off to the side in some warm water. Now I found that an old spice mug. This one, here's the one I'm using. Works really good as a brush cut. That brush sits almost. It's just really close to upright. It's just a perfect size for that kind of thing. So a, a makeshift brush scuttle, that Old Spice shaving mug works, works really well for that. And tonight's soap is going to be Shannon Soaps Silk Pajamas. Now I got this in the pass around. Christopher David Bailey was really nice and that's a really nice sample in my opinion uh, he was really nice and he gave us several samples along with the uh, Paul Mall Barbers pass around that he sent so I've got several that I'm going to be reviewing from the samples but I just took a about half of that sample because I think I don't think that I'm going to need any more than that. Probably not quite that. And I'm going to just press it down like that into the bottom of my favorite lather bowl. And I'm going to take my brush that's soaked a while and I'm going to load it off of that sample. I wanted to try Shannon soap for quite a while, uh, but it's just like everything else, guys. You know, there's so much product out there that I want to try that I'm finding I'm not having the time and the money to get to them all. So, really cool, Chris to uh, include some samples for us in this pass around Chris thank you so much that's pretty awesome view let's look at Shannon soap des description of silk pajamas which is the soap that we're using the description on the website says a sophisticated blend of tobacco blossom caramel and notes of mandarin honey and rose and I to be honest with you, there's a some type of scent in here that reminds me an awful lot, in my opinion, of Razor Rocks Triple X. Now I'm not saying it's the exact same scent, but there's a familiarity there that feels to me in my mind when I smell it. Razor Rock Triple X. So, anyway, that's uh, that's what I get. I don't get. Uh, let's see, what does it say again? I don't get tobacco. I get a bit of tobacco blossom. Excuse me a minute. I get. Uh, I don't get caramel. Caramel. I get honey. Uh. I don't get the mandarin. It just, I certainly don't get rose off of it. It's just the, the uh, scent together. Uh, turn it into something that actually, I, I quite like it. It does smell a bit just like a really nice soap, you know. Uh, and I like that kind of scent as well. Uh, you know, I, I love all the different scents that 
all the different shave soaps come in and from the really strong scents to the very lightest and uh, you know all the different kind of flavors and everything like that but I do there's a a place in my heart that I really really like the uh, sort of the more actual just soapy types of scents is why I like things like Mitchell's wool fat or uh, and triple X to me I know everybody says oh that smells like some kind of a I forget what it is some kind of expensive perfume I don't get perfume off of triple X I get a really nice soapy kind of scent and there's a scent in it that harkens back to my childhood in triple X and I don't know I don't know what it is I cannot remember <laughs> Oh, what that sin is all about but anyway lovely soap triple X and this it's got a kind of a, a fluffy kind of lather or rather a foamy to me kind of lather and it may just be that I gave it too much water or I haven't beaten it enough let me go back because and smack on it some more uh, because I have a tendency to throw water at soap and some soaps when you do that you really have to smack them pretty hard with a brush in order to beat all the bubbles out and get the soap to the consistency that it's supposed to be at. So for the razor tonight, we're going to use my 51 the Victor 6 8. All right, lovely. I'm getting a lot of glide on the razor, but I'm not getting a lot of slickness. And I know that those two seem to go together. So what I'm thinking is that there's an underlying slickness in the soap that That's present in the lather itself, but once the the uh, lather comes, is scraped off the face by the blade, the slickness just disappears. I've experienced that with soaps before. Uh, but the razor is gliding. along my skin really well uh, very smoothly and it may be one of those soaps once I finish this pass I'll find out that uh, you can throw some water up on your face after you shave the lather off And get boatloads of slickness uh, or things like uh, touch-ups that kind of deal so let me see a little bit more water oh uh, no actually there's a little bit there would be enough there to do a bit of touch-up but it's not 
I unload and load of it, but I'm getting plenty of glide with the blade, so the fact that I can't actually feel a lot of slickness on my face once the lather is removed is to me a non issue. I like super slick or uber slick or or whatever it is that you want to call it but as long as the glide is there and the shave is smooth uh, that's all that actually really counts you know and I've got that really really nice Okay, there's more slickness there. Maybe I can't remember that I put any water on my face before I lathered up. Maybe that's what it is, is I needed a bit more water on my face. There's there's plenty of slickness there now. So I would tune to discount what I was saying earlier as not having put enough water on my face before and that's important people don't you know if you got a dry face now there are some soaps like Williams mud soap it needs so much water in it that by the time you get the lather right you don't need any water on your face because that soap is did you get it right? Almost got that here with that square point. But if you get that lather right, there's so much slickness to that soap that you don't really need any water on your face. But most soaps can benefit, your face can benefit too. From putting a good layer of water on your face before you apply shaving soap. Some some soaps, I believe this in particular, actually need that in order to achieve the The slickness. That's inherent in the soap. But it's nice now, so. Wonderfully smooth shave. Oh, Alright. Wonderfully smooth. Now I'm going to just do a north south pass. That's better. On the bubble of my chin just to get that real good. That area of my face a lot of times requires just a little bit more attention than the rest of it. And there's nothing wrong with giving it the attention it needs. Now, I want to kind of address something. A friend of mine mentioned he's having trouble with a straight under his nose. Now, I've never shaved under my nose with a straight because I have a mustache and it's not going anywhere but you can take your nose 
and move that nose out of the picture. Come down. Get that. You can pull it up. Whatever it takes to get that thing out of your way so you can get the razor up. Uh, another thing would be start very light and tilt your blade as you come down. Remember, you don't really need pressure with a straight razor. Matter of fact, if you're applying pressure with a straight razor, if you have to apply pressure with a straight razor, for the most part, to shave, your blade is either dull or you're not paying attention to technique. There's an old adage, shave the lather and not the beard. And that applies especially with a straight razor, but it applies with traditional shaving of all kinds, but it's particularly with a straight razor. A light, light touch, take it easy. You know, also, I would also say as a beginning straight razors, you're going to have to settle if you're going to go all straight in the beginning and not touch up with a DE or SE or whatever it is that you, or a card even, whatever it is you're used to using. Uh, you're going to have to accept that you're not going to get as close as you normally do for a little bit until you develop your technique. That's just something you need to understand. But, okay, tonight's aftershave is a 27 Bugatti decanter from Avon. And it's Avon's Deep Woods. And I'm not quite sure what uh, you would uh, compare Deep Woods to. I have heard people compare it to Brute and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I don't get that. I get some tobacco, maybe. I get I get some citrus, some wonderful kind of citrus notes. Uh, just a nice, nice aftershave. I've uh, I used it when I was first starting uh, a lot of the Avon. I did, and Deep Woods was a favorite scent of mine. And I think it really goes. There's a there's a a freshness or a cleanness to the scent as well that really goes with with this silk pajamas I think but anyway uh, either way I love the uh, the aftershave and I got plenty of it so all right God bless you thank you for coming along uh, Shannon soaps uh, they seem to be really good. Nice glide. Uh, not sure what the post shave is going to be like, but uh, many of the artisans, most of the artisans, uh, soap their post shave is wonderful. I can't imagine that uh, I'm going to have any problems. The glide and the feel on my face as I was shaving let me know that the, that it was a quality uh, product. But the lather is a bit foamy, at least for me. But I think I I, I didn't have anything disappearing on me. Or anything like that which was a concern when I saw how foamy it was but like I said there was uh, on that second pass there was a good residual slickness to it and uh, throughout the shave there was a nice smooth flow to the razor wonderful feel uh, my face felt like it was protected from uh, being cut because the razor was gliding really well across my face and stuff like that so uh yeah i'd recommend you try shannon soaps out they uh i'm glad today that, that christopher you gave me enough for another shave of this stuff because uh, i'm going to enjoy it god bless you guys and i'll talk to you later